And hello, and welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel 4. Welcome to 2021, people. Well, for you guys, I'm still recording this in 2020, technically. It's been a while, though. Man, that ended up being a lot of episodes that I got from that fragment stuff. That was some of- last time, yeah. Last time, that whole segment was just one of the best mo one of the best segments in the series. It reminded me a lot of the, th like, thrill I got out of the finale segment in Cold Steel 2. It was fantastic. It didn't have quite- it didn't have like a major plot twist or stuff like that to really put it over the edge, but I uh, like Code Steel 2's ending, uh, well, finale chapter had, but yeah, it was real fun. So, uh, a few things to talk about. One, it's 2021, and I've decided- I'm not sure how much of it will end up going through, but I've reworked a bit of the branding and other stuff involved in the channel. Okay. It should all be reminiscent of what was there before, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, new, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so, hopefully that's good. Uh, and, t uh, two, there's some stuff about the game I want to talk about. Uh, three things, actually. We'll go in order in how long it'll te uh, take me to talk about them. One, uh, there was a mention in the comments about back in Crossbell, when we were fighting that one, um, wanted monster. Apparently, it was one of the devil monsters from Sky the Third. Which makes sense. If, if you've watched my Theory of Everything video where I lay out precisely what I think happens, or the other times I've talked about in my speculation, in the very spoiler talks and whatnot, I generally believe that the monsters of this world are born from, um... Uh, my, my actual theory is that we're in, like, a pl like... It, without, like, leading up to it, there's a lot to explain, but basically the idea is that uh, we're in a phantasma, and phantasmas are more like an equivalent to, say, planets in this universe, and outside is the equivalent of space, which I'm considering in this case what I would think of as Gehenna. So those devils, or just that's just where the monsters come through, and when the septium, and the septium veins are basically bringing in energy and matter into this planet sort of place, so when the septium veins, when you have stuff like the Great Twilight and all that, when they're stressed, uh, what they do to keep those monsters out is reduced, and they can get through the cracks, basically. That's my general idea about how that works. So that makes sense. Uh, my second thought was this, this happened when I was editing uh, the Crossbell stuff. Uh, and, you know, Campanella has a lot of thematic stuff in his, like, move pull and what he does revolving around win. So I just had a thought. As part of my theory of everything, I basically say that, um, and we've seen it with Zeit, and we've seen it with Ragnar to some extent, well, I guess not directly with Ragnar. Uh, I guess it's part of it. We've seen it with Zite, where he can change forms, right? Uh, and we've seen with Ragnar, or at least I speculate Ragnar, uh, like that sort of um, uh, gem of happiness or whatever it was called technically, was him, and he had like a baby form he could transform. Basically, the idea that they can change forms in a significant manner. I almost wonder if Campanella might be like, the, like and it was also it would also explain why he's not aging or anything like that. Um, he might be like the sacred beast of wind or something like that. And he's an observer too. All he's always there to observe what's going on. And given the fact that my um, theory on who uh, the Grandmaster is is an incarnation of Idios, not necessarily the goddess in a form of the goddess, that would make some sense if he was there as a sacred beast doing the bidding of her to go and observe everything. Okay, so that's my current theory on Campanella. Uh, <laughs> three, they announced the Calvert Arc in some uh, fashion. Kuro no Kiseki, I believe is what it's called. I don't know much about it, obviously. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> obviously, considering I'm still playing Gold Steel 4 and there's a whole game in between. Um, uh, what I have, heard, I've seen the art for the new characters. Uh, I think it's actually the Crossbell artist is back doing the main character designs and the main art and stuff like that, which is good. And, I mean, I like the stuff for this, but I also like that. So it's a nice change of base after having five games with that character design style. Um, uh, I, I think they look I think they look pretty interesting, and I guess there's not much more to say about that. Um, I know that... What else did I even know? I'm blanking in what I thought I knew. <laughs> I don't know much about it. Oh, right. Um, there's also discussion about the meaning of the name. 
like it's Trails of Black might be some way that you could translate it, or maybe Twilight or Daybreak or something like that. I actually hope it's like Trails from Daybreak or something like that. That's what I hope they translate it as. Uh, I think that sounds really cool. I think that would be a really good uh, translation of whatever it is, assuming that it fits thematically and whatnot for what they're going for. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember because I didn't read much on what was there. I just sort of skimmed a few things uh, while trying to avoid spoilers, obviously. Uh, the other thing that I'm vaguely aware of is that apparently they're implementing some real-time elements to the combat, which is making me skeptical. As if they just go action combat, I'm going to be very annoyed. But I was thinking about it, and there is a way, because ultimately the reason I like the combat in this series is because it feels so strategically liberating. There's so many things you can do, ideas you can implement, and all that sort of stuff, uh, where you just, it's like a toolbox of fun stuff you can implement, and it's fun to just create, like, ideas and builds and let them loose on the world and the story of the battles and stuff like that. It's fun. Now, if they go to a point where the action stuff is action, then a lot of that's lost, because it's, that strategic toolbox stuff is 99% because of the slow-paced tactical combat, the fact that you can actually do that. So, but I was thinking of a way I feel as though they can make it really work. What I think they could do, what I think they should do, is I think they should do a system where basically, and this might be, I haven't played the Final Fantasy VII Remake, this might be what that does. I'm not 100% sure, as like I said, I haven't played it, but... What I think they should do is I think they should basically make it so that it's like semi real time where you're not where like you have the battle going on and turns or something else of that nature, but everyone's still like moving around and like maybe when it comes to your turn, it like slows down a bunch and then you pick something and it sort of like puts you on your toes because you do have a little bit of a time limit because people are moving around and things will go down if you don't move, if you don't make a decision quickly enough. So you have some elements of it where it's, like, there's actually, like, a tension, and it'll make everything feel more lively, too. But if you do it in the right way, you could do it where it's basically the same combat system, plus a little bit of movement and a little bit, like, a, basically a timer to make your decisions, because people are moving around. And maybe you have to account for the fact that they're moving for your area of effect locations and other things like that. And the other advantage, if they did it that way, is that if they have a dynamic system in place for people moving around with their weapons and doing all sorts of combat related stuff, they could focus that in and make that part of the actual like scene, like cutscene creation thing. How many times in the series ha have we had a time where the battle scenes and cutscenes are basically them cutting the camera to someone using their in battle animation for a single attack or something like that? And it's just like the static, they're sort of like, <laughs> like standing around sort of thing going on. But what if they had, like, a dynamic uh, system where they can move around and it automatically flows into using attacks and that's all already there because it's part of the battle system? Then they could make that actually work with, like, the, um, you know, cutscenes and whatnot, too. So there's an upside there, too. I think there's a way they can do it that would really satisfy me. But if they ultimately go in a direction where the real-time stuff is a priority and the tactical stuff is lost... And I know the game's not spectacularly balanced, I don't really care about that. It's the fun of applying a large variety of tactics and basically being like sandbox, toolbox sort of thing that's fun. If they can keep that, regardless of what they do, I will be happy. If not, I don't even know. I guess it depends how they implement it, but I'm not sure I'll be playing a nightmare anymore, basically. That might be the difference there, I suppose. It's, it's just sort of the... Yeah. I, I guess we'll see ultimately, but that's my take on it. And I don't know much else, basically, so don't tell me anything for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah. Sounds fun. Hopefully they can get Hajimari or uh, whatever they're going to end up calling that out in, um, well, sometime this year. That would be fantastic. Um, oh, because it's 2021 now, right? Hopefully they can push ahead the schedule for English stuff so it's not always two years back and now it's just one year out or something like that. Hopefully. 
Oh, oh, it's you guys. We finished our preparations. We can depart any time. <laughs> that new raiment of yours, uh, well becomes you, Reen. <laughs> Thanks, Vita. You're here, too. Interesting. Okay. Are you not sticking around? I assume you'd go off and do more stuff with Musei's thing, right? No? Yeah, maybe? Oh, I guess we could- we might dedicate some of your, uh, Musei's plan to doing what we need to do with Reen, yeah? But seriously, thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> You're welcome. I'd always wanted to get a look at the workshop in person anyways. And I'm glad Thomas and the General agreed to help us. Don't go thinking you're off the hook yet. Oh yeah, I forgot everyone's with me. <laughs> if you knew what we were doing, you could have contacted us. Wait, didn't you get in touch right before everything went down? Oh, that? Let's just say it was a little insurance. And it came through at the best possible moment. <laughs> what are we gonna do with you? Hmm, you're just as flaky as ever. You haven't changed all that much in all the time I've known you. Oh, is this a room? Or both their rooms, maybe. Ooh, a radio. Huh. How about that? It's hard to imagine Vita living here with all of you. Uh, Grianos and I lived here as well. Ah, uh, that takes me back. What has it been, ten years now? Oh, that reminds me. Just an observation I wanted to point out, and I've thought it many times over the years. Um... The fact that we've... Have we ever been introduced to another personality in any of the other uh, Divine Knights? In the same way that Valimar has had? Like, we haven't heard any of them talk in any capacity. You could say, oh, it's because it's between them and their Awakener. But we haven't heard that for any of the other ones that I can remember. And I, I, I don't really have any reason outside of that to believe it. But I almost wonder if Valimar could be out of the ordinary. Like, that could have been something like weird going on. And the reason I thought of this is because I was thinking of the fact that Celine and uh, Celine talked. And it's like, Grianos, did, did Grianos talk too? I think they said that she did, but I don't think we've heard Grianos either. This room hasn't changed at all. You could, have, uh, you could have gotten rid of my bed, you know. No way. We always knew that you'd come back someday. You get in trouble and you get fucking stuck here. Or you need to come here to, you know, save yourself. We didn't want you to drop in on us and have nowhere to sleep. Don't you have a bunch of extra rooms that you've been using for the rest of us? Hmm. Wow, you must... <laughs> wow, you must have been pretty desperate to see me again. Maybe if you called more often, we wouldn't have to worry about you so much. You tell her, Emma. <laughs> and Grandmother, you would stand to be honest about, about how you feel, too. Uh, wow. Emma's really something once she gets going. No wonder she was class president in your day. Yeah, it's like she was born for that role. Hmm. I suppose. Oh my goodness. Of course, the first thing we do when we get back has to be talk to her and get some Vantage Master thing going on. Some of the children have been playing this VM game recently. I tried it out myself, and it's not a bad way to pass the time. If you have a little spare, perhaps you'd li uh, like to play a match with me or two. Just for practice, perhaps. <laughs> she seems really into it. Well, she's that passionate about it, and I guess I could play a few games with her. It has been a while for you, Irene, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Farewell. Let's see if you can defeat me. Oh my goodness, you're gonna cry when you lose, aren't you? Uh, aren't you? <laughs> Let's go. Oh, cost Let the game three damage. Commence. Three mana to do four damage. That's pretty good. That might be dangerous. Don't want her to get more on the field. Seems like her thing's probably going to be doing a lot of damage. Oh my goodness! She has the fucking heal one, too. Victory is mine! She is better than I know Hmm. If I got in more cards I can use that are actually good. Okay, there are some... Let I don't know if they're new commence. cards, because I... Cause I didn't change shit back in the day, but there are definitely some better cards. <laughs> oh, that's a good start. I have a lot of cards that let me draw more cards. Because I guess part of my strategy in this is basically 
trying to assure that I'll actually, you know, finish the game on top. <laughs> or, uh, get to the specific cards I want to use more than anything. That's part of it. And, uh, that really good healing one also has the ability to let you draw a card when it gets, uh, taken off the field, so... It's like, huh, okay. I can do that. <laughs> Victory is mine! Let the game commence!
Okay, just... Yeah. Gotta hurry this up. Oh, I'm out of cards! I didn't even realize! One more match! <laughs> that is what I expected. You won, like, twice. You were actually easily the strongest person I've played that against so far. <laughs> Seeing the two of you together is so touching. If only Griannis could be here, too. That would be nice. Wasn't he- oh, he. Okay. Wasn't he sliced apart right down to his soul? <laughs> I would admit, that was unfortunate. But I'm gathering up the scattered pieces of his power, so he should be able to return one day. If I can't do that much, I'm not worthy of being called the Azure Abyss. Where do you even get that nickname? Hmm, with your abilities, it might just be possible. How infuriating. It took me at least a century to master creating a familiar. I'm sure Vita only picked it up this fast because she had your knowledge and experience to draw on, Grandmother. How do we get around to talking about something so weird? Why are we even silly here for this conversation? They are witches after all. I guess this is normal for them. Hey, Celine, aren't you going to change in human form? Don't. Don't you dare. I was looking forward to seeing that. Oh, hey, you're right. I'm so used to being a cat that I didn't even notice you changed back. What a waste. You look so cute. No, Musei. Do not... Do not... Do not encourage that behavior. I already told you, I'm not- it's not a form I like shape-shifting into. <laughs> Seems like she's not too keen on the idea. She has her reasons, no doubt. Oh my, so many- so many things. I kind of wish I had more time. You feel so nostalgic. Anyway, I'll leave Crow to you guys. He should be able to tell you more about the rivalries and the curse of the Empire. He spent so much time with the gnomes. He probably knows even more than I do. Vita? In other words, you're not going to tell us anything. You're such a sweet child once. Why did we go wrong? <laughs> Alright, have it your way. We'll get to the truth eventually. As for Crow, I promise we'll take care of him. Thank you, Reen. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Finally. Uh... I don't like it, but I know you have to leave again. But you should at least say hello to everyone before you go. Sure, sure, I can do that. Uh, at least they're putting them in groups. Man, this would be a lot of people to talk to uh, otherwise. Also, this is an interesting group. Oh, hey, if it ain't my favorite customers. Oh, you're my favorite shop clerk? Team Thors, what are you guys up to? Making the goodbye tour before you depart. Wait, are you, is the old Class 7 not going to work with us? More of a thank you tour, really. I've got a lot of people I need to show my gratitude to. Not least of all you, Josette. <laughs> You're a lifesaver in every sense of the word. You put yourself through so much danger, and just for my sake, too. Oh, don't mention it. Given what you've been through, it's the least I could do. No kidding about the danger, though. What with the military tightening its grip. So we decide that helping you is only the right thing to do. It's not like you forced us. Well, I appreciate it either way. Your brothers have been taking the bobcat all over the place, huh? Well, this problem isn't Erebonia's alone, right? We've been flying back and forth from Liberal and Calvert, for the most part. Are you delivering messages, maybe? You are, huh? Well, if you find yourself running low on arms, you know who to call. Anti-air missiles, bungle, uh, bunker busters, you name it, we got it. Um, Swords of the End. I think there might only be one of those, though. Hard pass. The machine guns and cannons do just fine. <laughs> As if those aren't <laughs> intimidating enough. Things are different now, Jingyo. We're not Sky Bandits anymore, you know? I wonder if they worked with her, or her, like, her mother, back when they were Sky Bandits. Like, they sold the shit they stole to her, maybe. Ooh, that would be interesting. 
I do remember us hearing a thing or two about that. So your armaments came from Nine Volley, then? Yeah, things are looking to get a bit rough and tumble in the near future. They're secondhand, obviously, given our budget. I threw in some free ammo. Think of it as a one-time limited offer. That baby's full auto, so you need to eat, uh, so you can really eat through it if you're not careful. That's what I bank on. You use them in a bunch and you buy more ammo from me. That's how I get my money. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. We'll put in or I'll put in an order if we start to run low. You're quite the connection to have, Jingo. She's done so much for us as well. By the way, Jingo, what are your plans from here? I, I, I will I will fucking say it again. They've announced Calvert. <laughs> so unless there's something in Hachimari that makes her a playable character. Make her a playable character. Do it. You know you know you want a Falcon. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> and obviously Cerberus too. I heard you're planning on leaving uh, Aaron. I guess you're headed back to Crossbell. Nah, I'm planning to keep running my own gig. I got a, I got a packed schedule myself. Big jobs to take care of and all. Gotta hitch me a ride with the capitalists for that. Part way, at least. Big jobs, huh? Gotta say, I'm kinda curious. Though ignorance may be bliss in this case. It's only natural for someone in Genius Trade. Uh, that someone in Genius Trade would be kept busy given the way the world's turning. Well, either way. You've been a great help to us, and I'm sure we'll uh, see more of you again, wherever that might be. Sure thing. I'll make sure to have the good stuff ready for you. Good luck out there, guys. Same to you, Jingo. I'll stick around a bit longer to exchange some more intel. We can all meet up later, okay? But of course, see you in a bit. Okay. Can I... Can, oh, Cerberus. Cerberus. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Is he trying to comfort me? Thanks, boy. You doing good these days? Uh If there's ever one that I need to press twice just to make sure there isn't more, it's definitely gotta be him. <laughs> Looks like we won't get to see you guys for a while. Things are probably going to get even more dangerous from here on out, but I believe you'll get through it. Yeah, we gotta be careful here. Just let me know if you need anything, especially if it's grenades. I got a ton of them on standby. Speaking of which, I've been looking for the pins for a few of them. You see them? Uh, I, uh, guess that's good to know. <laughs> I figured you'd set up shot right on the battlefield if you could, Jingo. I don't know whether I'd be impressed or creeped out. Why? Is that such a weird thing? My mama did it back when she was my age. What war? Like the Burl War? Where it is, she is the best weapons merchant around. Everybody wanted a piece of her wares. So I got a long way to go before I'm up to her level. That's where she gets it. Suddenly, a lot of the stuff Jingo says and does make a lot more sense. I just hope she and Josette don't take too many unnecessary risks. Well, best of luck to you all. Sad to see you're going, but... You deserve to stake out whatever claim you deem to be the best for your future. Oh, that is a lot of people. Choices. No one's upstairs. I can't make it not choice. Fine. Nice to see you, Randy. Agate. It's about time you showed up. Oh, I'm really digging this new look on you. You've upped your game since last I saw you. It's probably just the clothes. They were custom made, apparently. They had my measurements for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, right. I guess we've got to be working. Uh, we're going to be working with you too, huh? <laughs> Let me make up for a lack of proper introductions yesterday. I am Ren Bright. I believe you and my father are practitioners of the same school. Huh? Really? As in Lieutenant General Cassius Bright? I've never met him myself. But my master used to talk about him a lot. I'm Reed Swarzer. Pleasure to meet you, Ren. And thanks for the help before. <laughs> You're welcome. He doesn't seem phased at all. He's a lot calmer than I expected him to be. Well, he's had a lot of reason to mellow out in the past couple of days. Something about him reminds me of Love, though. I should probably keep my eye on him. I don't know, is that a good thing or a bad thing to be uh, compared to him? And I see you're here, too. I guess this is the first time we've seen each other since Crossbell, huh? Did you change your hairstyle by any chance? It, it makes it does make her look taller, I will note that. The fact that she doesn't have just, like, all the hair in the world covering her entire body. 
<laughs> it's actually like tie dumb. I sure did. It's been three months since we've seen each other now. For those of you, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kia Bannings. Nice to meet you all. She has all the pancakes. Altina's like, Green, can I have some pancakes too? Green's like, yes, you can have some pancakes. Uh, good to have you with us, Kia. I'm really grateful for all the help you've given us so far. That's no problem. You're the key to all our possible futures, Rain. So if there's anything else I can do for you, go ahead and ask. Am I really that important? Uh, Justin. Key do. Key do. Huh. Key do. Oh! Oh, 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 they're doing the, the kiddo. Uh, nickname. It, you just have to think about it for a second. Because it's not being said out loud. Uh, keto has got a sixth sense about this sort of stuff. It must be some kind of holdover from when she was a septarian. Yeah, because that's just something you hear about every day. At this point, I don't think we have any choice but to believe it. To be clear, does that mean Instructor Reen's return has cleared a path to saving the future? Sorry, I can't see that far ahead. I just know we have a chance now. Well, isn't that sort of... Saying that it's clear a path, even if that path is narrow. It all comes down to what you guys decide to do next. If you if you step if the first step you take after this conversation is with your right foot, we're gonna die. If it's with your left foot, we're gonna be okay. That's what will open the way forward. Oh. There's only one place we can go. To where Crow Ombrus is waiting. He also pilots the Divine Knight, yeah? That's not all. He was a member of Class 7 in his day, too. Guess things are starting to heat up, huh? Yeah. This is where our story really starts. Renny, Agate, thank you so much for everything. <laughs> Don't mention it. Ah, come on. No need to be so formal. We're way past that now. <laughs> all right. Whatever you say. Oh, they all have stuff still. Are you two planning to go back on the bab uh, Bobcat 2? Yeah, I'm gonna search West Erebonia next. Still haven't heard word from... Still haven't had word from Tito or Shara. I'll be heading east to meet up with Stell and the others. I'll see what I can find out from them. Let's all keep each other posted if we learn anything new. Sounds good to me. I wonder where Tita is now. Hopefully she's with everyone else from the branch campus. Right, did we... We did see her with Alfin, right? So she is... They're split up, but there's also other people that we've heard about missing that we haven't seen in any capacity yet. So either they've been captured and put places, or something else weird is going on. Hmm. Hmm. My first instinct is like they're trapped somewhere. Maybe like in a different dimension or something. Because we know that's a thing. Agreed. We still have yet to find a few of them, not to mention, instru uh, not to mention Instructor Toa. At the very least, I, will f I find it unlikely that the government would risk harming Tita. Even if she has been captured, they treat her well, for the circumstances. You really know how to take in the old picture, don't you, Duchess? <laughs> it's nice to meet a different kind of genius for once. I'll keep an eye out for Tita, too. Then, maybe when this all blows over, we can have tea together. I have some delicious Eastern blends I've been saving. Plus, we can even play some games together. Have you ever done a spin the bottle with a scythe? It's so fun. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm imagining it now. Oh, that sounds lovely. Have you ever played spin the bottle with a gun? That's even better. <laughs> I get the feeling you'd make for a fun opponent. Yeesh. I wouldn't want to get caught in the middle of these two going at it. Yeah, I'm glad they're on our side. <laughs> okay. So, will you two be going back on the Bobcat 2 yourselves? Yep, I'm off to search East Airboney next, but Kidu here's gonna have them drop her off back in Crossbell once she's wrapped things up. Well, that's only if I can find some clue about where Tio might be. Hmm, I wish there was something we could do to help. So she was with Elise, right? In a very nondescript library-looking place, yeah? Maybe that's literally St. Astraea? It could be. 
I don't think we've been in there enough to really identify much. Given that everyone else, I believe, we saw was in a place that seemed fairly connected to them, at least one of the two people were, right? And Elise is the only one of those two that have a, a connection to a place that they might be being kept. Don't stack so much onto your plate, Juni. Don't stack so much on your plate, Uni. You got your own part in this you gotta take care of. Let me hand it to you, Tan. You just focus on finding Toa and the other students. See you later, Yuna. I'll let you know the second we learn anything new. Down to the second, huh? You got a way to do that. We'll stay on the lookout for Tio, too, whenever we can. Please say hi to Lloyd for me when you get home, Kia. <laughs> you got it. Maybe you two will even get a chance to meet up again sometime. That'd be nice. And it's weird trying to imagine Lloyd and Instructor Reen getting along. True, but I suppose they have no reason to fight now that all the motivating factors are resolved. Yeah, I mean, even Reen was like, I don't really want to be doing this back in the day. This whole, it, like, it's the whole thing. It's like he becomes, because Reen's whole story is that he's basically someone who's been put into like a traditional hero's role with all the bells and whistles of he's got his superpowers, he has an ed he has like edgy superpowers, he has, uh, he's got, he's been, a, he's a chosen one basically, like literally with the sacrifice now. Uh, he got Valimar as a chosen one and all that sort of stuff. He became a hero and saved the day. No. But everything, like almost literally everything related to that has backfired on him. That included in some way. Because, like, realistically, if you played out that sort of stuff in real life, or in a realistic story, it wouldn't be just, like, happily ever after fairy tale sort of stuff. It would be, fuck, this actually isn't that great for me. I'm gonna, like, grow up with, like, psychological mental complexes that, like, fuck with my personality and whatnot, that sort of thing. I have to thank you, Principal Aurelia. Well, I mean, General Le Guin. I, I understand how much of a risk it must have been for you to help us. Oh, it was nothing. Now that you're feeling more up to it, how about you join me for a drink? Run, Reen, run! There's no way she's not amazing at that, too. You're, uh, they're absolutely exquisite. Not that I expect any less out of one of the Purple Lightning's recommendations. Oh, um... This one's flavored with sprigs of lavender. Ain't that something? How does that work? As a person that doesn't drink, that sounds incredibly weird to me. It's got such a refined taste to it, and it's so refreshing. You just won't want to put it down. Of course, that might mean you might get a little tipsy. I'll pass. It's still early in the day, and I've got my students to think of. Laura, Fee, what are you guys drinking? Same thing as Sarah. Is that mine's booze-free? I'm also sticking with the non-alcoholic version. I may be old enough to drink now, but I see no reason to get inebriated during the day. I tried the non-alcoholic one before. Can't say I understand why it's such a hit in comparison. Well, we both built up quite a tolerance ourselves. It takes much more to cut loose sometimes. So it's a lavender ale then? Hmm. Kind of want to try one myself, but I don't know if I'd really like how it tastes. Drinks of that nature are commonly quite bitter. I don't see the point in them. Bitterness has its own charms, you know. Like with green tea. Is green tea but I haven't had tea either. I don't drink coffee either, so it's like, a lot of this is going over my head. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I guess the kitties just don't understand glassier taste. Ugh. Who asked you? You're no position to lecture us on sophistication, Ash. <laughs> just like old times. It does sound like a pretty interesting drink, though. Maybe I'll come back and try it some other time. Just when they have nothing to do with it. There's no alcohol being forced onto me. So you're leaving soon. Are you sure you're going to be alright, Reen? Uh, thanks to you, yes, I feel fine. I'm really grateful to you for taking care of my students while I wasn't here. That's sweet of you to say. These kids are practically family to me now. I wouldn't mind looking after them whenever needed. Hey! You're making us sound like a bunch of hopeless children that need supervision. We're the ones that had to save you, remember? Yeah. You ain't exactly the picture of a responsible doll. Not to mention, she is helping us with the whole rescue operation, not babysitting us. That is besides the point. 
I am your instructor, aren't I? It is my job to look out for you guys. Oh, Instructor Reen, I must say that overprotective side of yours is just adorable. There she goes again. It's nice to see you're all cheered up. You should know, the Soul Shrine is one of the most ancient of its kind. It's connected to a massive spirit vein. There's got to be some reason behind them calling you there at this point in time. Make sure you're all ready to go and be prepared for anything. Thank you for the advice. Got it. Yeah, I thought I might... Is this new? Magic cuisine. Hmm. Is this new? It might... Well, it might be. Interesting. I don't know if this is new, though. Okay, I guess it is. That might be the thing they were talking about, even. 